Hi guys and uh, welcome to my review of the KZ DQS. This is going to be a relatively simple review to review to to make and to do because um, well it, it, you'll you'll see in a second it's it's not it's not a, a hard one to to position and to talk about in terms of its sound. Um, with regards to its its standard you know accessories and so on and so forth. I think that by by now we we are, we already know what KZ usually offers us. You know, it's acceptable tips. The cable is what it is, so it's not there where the money is spent. The money is spent where it matters, which is on the actual IEM. And in that aspect, uh, they they haven't disappointed once again. I mean, the fact that they can offer this for roughly twenty dollars, and uh, you know, have a nice built shell you know decent quality plastic uh, almost almost resembling resin a nice face plate design uh semi open well um, the, it's not the whole thing that's actually vented I'll, I'll i'll tell you that much it's just this center section here which has a little bit of a of a bigger opening so there's a kind of we could say this is kind of a semi uh, semi open then um Fit is, is is the usual KZ stuff. It fits very nicely. It's got a, it's always got this very much, um, not a, a custom IEM fit, but it, it just they you know the KZs of late uh, have have got just this they've gotten the shape of the of the shell, you know right, and it just fits nice and and it, I haven't really found anybody that complains about the fit although they're not exactly small but they always fit very nicely they're always ergonomically or or very stable in the ears you you know you can work out with them and, and the dqs is no exception um it fits really really nice isolates well really well once you've got it you know in the right position i'm using my trusted kb euro 7 tips as you guys can see um what else can i can i say i mean in terms of its physical uh, uh, attributes I think it's more than enough I'm not using the stock cable as you can see I'm using an XINHS cable um, so let's talk about the sound which is, is what's basically we want to know I could have brought out the whole range of the single DDs that um, KZ has been launching from from a year ago up to now but I, I thought that it just makes sense and it would be enough to position this if I did uh, just the following ones the EQ, the the KZ, the the, the EDX Ultra basically represents um, the models of KZ that used the older single, the, the older driver. Um, I'm going to try and show it to you, it's not easy, but if you look carefully, you can see, you know, it's a thicker driver, single hole as well, always in the front, but thicker driver. It's a driver that basically was the one found in the EDA Balance, the, the CCA CRA Plus. So it, it's that kind of series of driver. And uh, in the EDX Ultra, uh, for me at least, um, <clears throat> it kind of reached the, 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 the pinnacle of its performance. Um, it is a... a it's got very much that KC house signature, but it's a nice sounding IEM. It sounds full. It's got great bass. I mean, don't forget this is seventeen dollars. So this, you know, it's, don't 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 go don't go expecting craziness in terms of its uh, technical abilities. But everything is very much within reason for the price. Um, where they probably skimped the most when you now compare it with the latest offerings is on the build. The build is very very simple. It's a really Although it's the same kind of plastic shell, you know the, the faceplate is nothing special. The the nozzle as well is also full plastic, so nothing nothing really outrageous there. But the overall sound was nice, was pleasant. If anything, the the treble extension could sometimes get a little bit unpolished, but overall it was a nice, pleasant sound. It did what it's supposed to do, and it did it well. Then uh, they introduced. Um, uh, a, an updated version of the XUN driver and the XUN driver if you remember that is that driver that's got like a kind of a conical shape in the back that you found in the, the DQ6 the DQ6S uh, you found them as well in the ZAS and um, the Lyra the CCA Lyra was the first to use that driver that updated version of the XUN driver and if you look carefully 
you can see it's a very thin driver so gone is that kind of back bell shape that they used it so it's a relatively thin driver uh, and it uses a, a very tight magnetic uh, very tight uh, gap in the magnetic uh, field uh, where, the, where the voice coil is, is um, uh, working the, the, the diaphragm as well is, a, is an ultra thin diaphragm uh, to convey more speed and more extension and the Lyra was the first to use this and compared to the EDX Ultra um, it offered a not as much extension past 10k let's put it that way uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this based on obviously my graphs and what I'm listening um, but it offered a, a sound that was perhaps a little bit less congested why, why less congested? well because they first of all lowered the bass quantity uh, and the actual driver even even if the quantity of the bass was exactly the same the driver just functions in a different manner it just has a different tonality a different uh, way of, 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 of sounding so overall the sound um, wasn't necessarily a major upgrade just a different flavor um, of the sound that you would find in the EDX Ultra or the, the EDA Ballast from the EDA series um, nice mids, uh, nice vocals. You know, uh, the the perhaps the biggest flaw was that the vocals, uh, the mids were sometimes a little bit too forward, so female vocals could sound somewhat a little bit um, on the edge. But otherwise, it was it was a like I said, it was a nice sounding IM. It was a decent enough upgrade over the over the over the EDX Ultra and so on. And the price basically maintained itself as well, very close, roughly. 20 22 dollars roughly then towards the end of the year they came out with the cxs and again a cca and this yes this was an upgrade especially in terms of the construction i mean this is like 23 dollars 25 dollars at most so the build is exquisite honestly it's it's a build which i mean you wouldn't find it or you wouldn't expect it at an iem of this price it's got this nice you know uh, a hole in the actual shell which gives it a nice um, it just gives it a nice feel a nice unusual vibe it's semi-vented again there, as you can see it's semi-vented from the back uh, it uses the same driver and basically what they did on this as compared to the Lyra was they gave it just a little bit more bass a little bit more bass and they just changed slightly the profile past you know oh when it when it passes the 2k um, on the Larry, you know, you had the initial pin again, picked it just over 2K, and it just changed a little bit that profile from 2K onwards. Um, what was the um, the overall sound? Uh, well, it was an improvement over the Lyra, because it, it didn't sound as edgy as the Lyra would sound on the mids. Uh, but again, it wasn't like it was a major uh, improvement in the in the in the in the sound department. It was it was a polishing up very much what basically KZ did last year they they launched multiple single DDs single DD IEMs and all of them were kind of testing the reaction and then they were polishing it up on the next one testing the reaction polishing it up on the next one but the reality was that they got it right or almost right with the EDA balanced uh, and it was you know it, it was it was really hard to then do something which like kind of blew the EDA balance out of the way. The EDX Ultra was an improvement, but if I have to be frank and be honest and, and you know, if you own an EDA balance, would it make sense to buy the Ultra? No, not really. I mean, you know, you it's not like you were going to find a major difference in sound. Um, and the same thing basically applied again to the CXS. So the CXS, yes, was an improvement over the, the Lyra. It was using again this, this newer driver. And it was definitely, if I have to kind of see the evolutionary scale of all these single DDs, I would probably say, yes, it was probably the best one when you contemplate everything, build quality, overall sound, so on and so forth. It was probably the best and probably the single, the best single DD they, they launched. Okay, although, you know, keeping in mind was what I just said, not major day and light differences. It was just a question of polishing up things here and there. And again, again, if it was if it was sound that you were looking for and you already owned one of the previous models 
mm, you know you could argue maybe it's not worth it if the money doesn't uh, doesn't uh, burn a hole in your pocket then get it if you are or if you were in the market to buy one of these IEMs that are I've been mentioning up to now, then yes, the, the, the CXS would probably be the one that made the most sense, especially because of the premium build quality. Uh, enter now the DQS. The DQS drops the price slightly because although the shell is nice, it's not a full metal shell, it's a plastic with a metal faceplate and so on and so forth. Again, using the same driver as in the CXS or almost the same driver. I mean, if there is any difference, it's, it's, it's minute. It's also got the semi... Um, uh, open uh, you know shell like I mentioned and the sound again what they did is they added a bit more bass again as compared to that uh, and they changed again a little bit the profile of the, the of the mids and, and highs uh, past the initial pin again peak um, what was the end result the end result is a more v-shaped signature period uh, is it as uh, overall as versatile as the CXS or the Lyra? No, it's more of a return to form in terms of the very more traditional case signature. It plays well, it's fun, uh, you know, but you can feel that it's lost a little bit of the cleanliness that you found with the CXS. The openness that the CXS had, you lost it. The openness that the Lyra had, you lost that. It's not as open sounding, especially in the in the in the mids, in the vocals. Uh, in terms of timbre and tonality, I consider this as well to have been a slight regression. The timbre and tonality of the CXS and the timbre and tonality of the EDX Ultra, or in my opinion, in my personal opinion, very very good, very accurate. Or of, of course, always keeping in mind what price bracket we are talking about. Um, and so yeah that's it bass it's it's there's ample amounts of bass it's a little bit on the slow side because that increase in quantity has slowed it down when it's a little bit less like it was on the lyra and on the cxs it was a more dynamic bass um the mids sound obviously more recessed um and then the highs they are fine but they just sound a little bit darker um Technicalities is what I just mentioned. They, they, it's it's fine for what it is. It's not 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 the the, the most detailed uh, monster in terms of retrieval, you know, detailed retrieval and so on and so forth. It's not an IEM that you would use, for example, if you want to do some critical listening. Definitely not. But it's an IEM that it's fine if you want to take it to the gym. So yeah, that's it, guys. I mean, they, 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 you know, there's really not much more than I can say. It's a fun, you know, fun sounding IEM. It's decently well built. It plays well. Uh, if you have any of the ones that I've previously mentioned, does it make sense to get this? Honestly, no, it doesn't. I would rather wait to see what other single DDs will be coming out in the next couple of months from from KZ because I'm sure I'm sure that they will improving they will be improving on this driver and its tuning. And uh, and well, if you want to play around or if you want to you know do something more, then uh, look. I've I've done a, a little mod here on the CXS, not on this one. It's another one I have over here, on this one. Okay, uh, and that mod uh, I can I can share with you guys if you if you send me a private message. That mod, in my opinion, in my opinion, is what the CXS should have had from the get go. If the CXS had come from factory, sound in the way that it, I've been able to get it to sound that small little mod that would have definitely have been a big upgrade over the previous models and an upgrade that, pr that would perhaps have put uh, KZ and CCA uh, in, in the in the grand scheme of of these uh, more budget single DDIMs in a in a position like the position that the tanks one year has obtained uh, like the position that um, uh, the, the, the 7 hertz zero when it first came out also obtained so it would have pay, placed it in a, in a position of being a definite reference anyway guys that's it as always like and subscribe I'm not gonna show you the graphs unless you really want me to I can then probably send you the graphs as well or just post it on, 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 on one of the uh, groups on Facebook once I've also shared this this video there and uh, yeah, that's it, guys. All right.
As always, like and subscribe. Any questions you might have, please feel free to ask, and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Take care. Bye-bye.